He is fierce, he is tough, and he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. His name is Ironhide, and this is what would happen if he survived the events of the Transformers Cinematic Universe. During the first Transformers movie, Iron Knight came down with the first wave of Autobots. Once he landed, he scanned a GMC Topkick, C4500, and made his way to meet up with the other Autobots. He later was introduced to us to be a weapon specialist, and later in the film, Iron Knight teamed up with Ratchet to help escort Sam to a building. But after the battle was won, Iron Knight held the body of his fallen comrade Jazz and told Prime that they could not save him and the first movie came to a close for Ironhide. But when Revenge of the Fallen comes around, Ironhide is on a mission with Ness to help take down the Mulcher, but he does not do it alone. He gets a bonus help from Optimus Prime, and together, they take down the Mulcher. Later, Ironhide is accompanied by the rest of the Autobots in the Battle of Egypt, and during this battle, Ironhide lost his beloved cannons, but later he regains them. This is probably a continuity error between the two different animation rigs for Ironhide. And after this shot, Revenge of the Fallen came to a close for Ironhide. During Dark of the Moon, Q gives Ironhide two new weapons to replace his cannons that he lost in Operation Firestorm. Shortly after this though, Ironhide is sent on a mission to stop the two remaining dreads, Crankcase and Crowbar, and he gets accompanied by Sideswipe. Ironhide and Sideswipe give Crowbar and Crankcase a chance to leave, but first they have to put their weapons down. But even though Crowbar and Crankcase do what they are told, they had a little trick up their sleeves, and that trick was their light bar bombs. Crowbar's light bar bomb hit Ironhide in the chest while Crankcase gets chopped in half by Sideswipe. For this, Ironhide shot Crowbar in the face with Sideswipe's gun and he pulled out Crowbar's weapon, and he shoved it into Crankcase's face, leading to Crankcase's death. Later, Ironhide was commanded by Lennox to protect Sentinel Prime, but this would be Ironhide's last stand. Soon after Ironhide guards Sentinel, Sentinel turns around and he shoots Ironhide in the back, using his Cosmic Rust Cannon, which would guarantee Ironhide a slow and painful death. But two shots did not do it for Sentinel. He shot Ironhide a third time, in the chest, giving Ironhide some excruciating pain. It also caused Ironhide to witness his own body to slowly fall apart and turn into dust, and there was nothing Ironhide could do to stop him, so he had to accept his fate and perish. And sadly after that, that was the last time we would ever see Ironhide in the movieverse ever again. Which begs the question, what would happen if Ironhide never died? So Roblox where Ironhide is about to get shot, instead of Bonebeat being transformed into his car mode, he would be in his robot mode. And when we saw Sentinel cock his gun, he warned Ironhide in the nick of time, and Ironhide ducked. But a shot zoomed towards Bonby, but hit a box in front of him. As Sentinel was about to shoot again, Ironhide pulled out one of his guns that Q gave him and shot the Cosmic Rust Cannon, which exploded and the rust from inside the gun hit Sentinel's arm, partially damaging it. But because Sentinel was immune to Cosmic Rust, it did not damage him too terribly bad. Seeing Sentinel Prime distracted, Ironhide shot at Sentinel Prime's chest, which knocked him down to the ground. Seeing that he was vulnerable, Bombi jumped towards him in hopes of trying to pin him to the ground. But this tactic by Bombi did not work because Sentinel smacked Bombi in the air with his shield. Seeing this attack from Sentinel, Ironhide ran towards Sentinel while shooting at him. Then Ironhide threw one of his guns, hitting Sentinel in the head. And when Ironhide was about to smack Sentinel with his other gun, Sentinel stabbed him through the chest, which made Ironhide collapse to the ground. And then Sentinel got out of the area before Optimus Prime could show up. And then Sentinel Prime stole the pillars from the nest. After regaining consciousness from Sentinel's shield blast, Bombi called Ratchet for help because Ironhide got stabbed. Ratchet got on the scene as fast as he could, and once he got there, it wasn't surprise him because the stab wound that Ironhide got was only a few inches away from Ironhide's spark, and luckily for Ironhide, he could be fixed in no time. Fast forwarding to when the Autobots are being exiled, Ironhide rants out they were being exiled until Optimus reminds him of the plan, and soon after, Ironhide loads himself onto the Xantium. Once the Autobots return, Ironhide listens to Optimus Prime's speech, and the entire Autobot gang rolls out. But later when Bombi, Dino, Ratchet, and Q get captured by the Decepticons, Ironhide storms in, and this is how this epic battle would take place. Once Q is about to get shot, Ironhide honks his horn, which makes all Decepticons look in Ironhide's direction. Ironhide, seeing that he got their attention, transforms and jumps onto Soundwave. Once he landed on Soundwave, the impact killed Soundwave instantly. Seeing what just happened, Barricade runs off, but the other Decepticon drones stand their ground, and try their best to fight the Autobots and Ironhide. But as always, the Autobots take them all out. The Autobots thank Ironhide for saving their lives, and after hearing the gratitude, Ironhide commands the other Autobots to get to the bridge, while he will go after Shockwave all by himself. Then Ironhide transformed and made his way to Shockwave. Once he found Shockwave, he automatically pulled out his guns and he started to shoot at him. This caught Shockwave off guard, and it caused him to stumble. But seeing Ironhide, he shot him, and that shot laid a direct hit to Ironhide's chest, which severely damaged him. But Ironhide was not ready to quit yet, 
so he got back up on his feet and made a run towards Shockwave. Seeing this, Shockwave made another blast towards Ironhide, but Ironhide jumped over it. But with fast thinking, Shockwave grabs Ironhide while he's in the air and slams him into the ground. This caused Ironhide to be stunned for a little bit. And seeing this, Shockwave was about to step on Ironhide, but Ironhide rolled out of the way just in the nick of time. And he gets back up behind Shockwave, and he rips Shockwave's hose right out of his back. This makes Shockwave mad, and he gets his blade out and he slices it at Ironhide, chopping off Ironhide's left arm. This puts Ironhide in a lot of pain, but he turns that pain into anger, and he grabs his blaster, and he shoots Shockwave in the side of the head. This causes Shockwave's eye to dislodge, which gave Shockwave excruciating pain. And because of this, Shockwave made an escape. Instead of chasing after Shockwave, Ironhide picked up his left arm, and he walked off. And we would later see him at the end of Dark of the Moon with Ratchet fixing his arm. Now during AoE, Ratchet is getting hunted by the Cemetery Wind, but prior to this hunt, Ratchet sent a distress message that Ironhide received. And once Ironhide received this message, he made his way as fast as he could to Ratchet. And the time Ironhide made to Ratchet was Ratchet's interrogation. And this is how the new interrogation scene would work. Ironhide would drive up and transform by Ratchet, demanding what's going on. Cemetery Wind sees him as a threat and starts to shoot at Ironhide. This makes Ironhide very angry, so he blasted both of his guns into the ground to create a mini shockwave that immobilized some but not all the Cemetery Wind forces. During all this, Ratchet prepares his leg to be transformable again, but it was not 100% fixed. And seeing that there were two Autobots on the scene, Salvoy toyed Lockdown to shoot the stronger one. Of course, this was Ironhide, and the shot from Lockdown's blast went straight straight through Ironhide's back, severely damaging him. As the shots were being fired at them, Ratchet came to Hyde's aid, but Ironhide demanded that Ratchet would get out of there, but Ratchet hesitated by saying, I will not let you die. But Ironhide stuck to his word by saying, Get out of here now. Ratchet was heartbroken to leave Ironhide behind, but he knew it's what he wanted, and he wanted Ratchet to live on. Ratchet exchanged a last glance towards Ironhide, and he nodded while saying, You were always the bravest of us. I'll eventually see you on the other side. And then Ratchet sped off. After seeing that Ratchet got away, Ironhide finally got up saying, I will tear you apart! While in his rage, Salvoy requested backup. So Lockdown came up on the scene, with his hook out ready to stab Ironhide. Lockdown jumped in the air, but Ironhide seeing Lockdown fly towards him, he punched Lockdown square in the face, which knocked Lockdown back to the ground. After that, Ironhide killed the last remaining Cemetery Wind forces, and when he saw Salvoy running for his life, a smile accumulated on his face. As he picked up Salvoy, he said, Why did I protect you insects again? And then he crushed Salvoy with his bare hands. Lockdown finally recovering from his devastating blow to the face, saw that Ironhide was vulnerable, so he transformed his face into a gun and he shot Ironhide in the back. This caused Ironhide to fall on the ground while crushing a cemetery wind vehicle. Ironhide later got back up on his feet, seeing Lockdown approach him. Ironhide asked who Lockdown was, and Lockdown responded with the whole classic Where's Optimus Prime deal. Ironhide responded back by shooting a shot at Lockdown's chest while saying never. This made Lockdown very angry, so Lockdown got back up onto his feet, and Ironhide and Lockdown had a brawl. And this is how that fight would've went down. As soon as Ironhide tried to shoot Lockdown a second time, Lockdown ducked under Ironhide's gun and disarmed Ironhide. But using his gun as a bat, he smacked Ironhide in the face. And then Ironhide picked up Lockdown and body slammed him into the ground. As Lockdown was pinned to the ground, Ironhide started to punch at Lockdown's face. But Lockdown dodged each of these punches. And he got his dagger out and stabbed Ironhide in the side of his back. This caused Ironhide to fall off Lockdown in pain. Lockdown used it to his advantage, and he got out his spark extractor, then shoved it towards Ironhide's spark chamber. With all his might, Ironhide tried to push back the extractor, but he was too weak from the stab wound, and he soon gave way. But before he did, he told Lockdown, You may have won the battle, but not the war. And after those words, the extractor extracted Ironhide's spark. After he killed him, Lockdown replied to his corpse, We will see about that. Well, that's all for this episode of What If I Survived. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a big fat like and subscribe if you're new, because I do Transformers content like this each week, so it would be highly appreciated. As always, this has been Trans Series saying, keep on theorizing.